Hey everybody, my name is Chris and I'm the founder of Lukey Bike Adventures. I am back continuing to work on this little specialized hot rock here. I've got it all apart, got it all cleaned up. Last video was supposed to be replacing the, or, or reinstalling the fork um, and handlebars, but I got distracted and we ended up cleaning off some decals instead. So if you've ever wondered how to remove some stickers and decals from your bike, go ahead and watch that video. Now we're going to get into what I actually intended to do in the last one. Um, and that's reassembling this guy. So I took it all apart because there was some, some clunkiness, some, it just wasn't, the handlebars weren't turning smoothly. And so I wanted to take it apart, check the bearings, check the races here, making sure this is all perfectly smooth and it is, it just needed to be readjusted. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. Uh, so, but once you're putting it back, I highly recommend, well, for one, this has a lot of parts to it. So make sure when you're taking it apart, you take it apart in the correct order and like really pay attention to how it goes. That will save you some hassle. And even if you do that, um, I recommend just doing a dry assembly because to put it together for real, you're going to use a lot of grease and that can get messy, especially if you didn't do things quite right. It gets harder to see and it's just messy and more difficult. So put it together dry, but then make sure you go back and put the grease in it to make sure for it to work properly basically and not have problems down the road. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, you need all your parts and it makes it a lot easier if you have something that will help hold the fork up for you. Um, I like to use typically like um, like a Velcro, Velcro strap if you have one. You could use a bungee cord. Uh, I'm actually going to use a dog collar in this case. Uh, I think that's going to work, but you'll you'll see in just a sec. So, um, oh wait, there's some of the parts still on here. So yeah, there's a lot of parts here. So what you have here, if you want to take a look at this, you have this this race. Uh, I think it's called the crown race actually, and that's where that's where these these bearings sit. And so um, they go on there and you want that to be nice and smooth. And that's why you put the grease there because you want this to just glide here. And that's what turns your handlebars. The weight of the front end of the bike is all sitting on this and you want to have as little friction as possible. Um, and so the bearings, one goes at the top and one sits at the bottom. In this particular bike, they're the same size. They don't really matter. Uh, but that's not always the case, so that's why you want to make sure that you are taking it apart and putting it back together the right way. Um, and they actually are not symmetrical. So if you see this side versus that side, they look different. One side is flatter than the other. I don't know how blurry that is, hopefully you can see it. But So when you're putting it together, you want to really pay attention to that. So let's see if I can get you a little bit closer to the action here. All right. So when you're testing it, uh, let's look at the top one. You can put it in that way and you see how it kind of sits and there's some wobble there and it kind of sticks up. But if you put it that way, it sits flush and it's it just seems to fit a little bit better so that's the way it's supposed to go and the same thing with the bottom you want the rounded part to go like up so that this part is flat and flush and so when we're putting the bearings on here we want to go that way oh sorry i skipped a part the first part is actually this this little black ring it's just kind of like a see how that makes like a nice little it basically just seals out the helps keep dirt and debris out and gives it a nice clean finish and all that so that actually goes first and uh they you know it's, it's a sandwich basically we're making a, a sandwich so we got one on the top and one on the bottom so i'm going to put that one first flat side up and then the bearings i'm going to go round side up and now I'm just going to slide this guy in here all the way and this 
if you let it go, it's gonna drop. So this is where having an extra hand really makes things easier because otherwise you have to do this all with one hand, which you can do. It is definitely possible. I've done it, but it is needlessly more difficult when you can just grab something and wrap it around like so. Oh, maybe a collar isn't the best for this. Maybe that's gonna be hard to, to snap with one hand. Let's see if I can make it work. Yeah, and now I can let that go. And even if it doesn't have to hold it completely perfectly together, but this gives me my free hands so I can grab my tools, I can figure out which way this all goes next. So we're dropping that in. And then let's see, we got, what do we have next? Probably, maybe that, oh, nope, nope, nope. So this is the other side that has the, where the bearings sit on this side. Like that. And actually, yeah, you can see, see how there's a, a gap there? And so there, actually, yeah, that does go next. There you go. So just gonna piece it together. And so now there's a nice, tight, like it almost looks like what, there's a seam there, because you know, it's a moving part but it's, it's very tight. So if you turn it that way, do the same thing. You can see there's a bigger gap there and it kind of wobbles and it really doesn't, it doesn't roll as smoothly. So, so you will know if you're paying attention which way is the right way. It's, it's fairly obvious. Um, and then this is some kind of a little wedge guy, I guess. Oh. So let's, let's push this back up. And so you put that on and that kind of pulls everything nice and tight together so that it all stays now we have this is just a spacer put that on there and now the handlebars can go on top so there's these, <coughs> sorry. So there's the screws here. We're not tightening these right now. I'm gonna leave that alone. Instead, we're gonna put another spacer on the top. Oh, and I dropped the screw on the ground. Of course I did. So I gotta try to get that. <laughs> And so this guy goes in the middle. And that's what's going to hold this together. And so that's how it assembles. This screw up at the top here. Where's my screw? This puts pressure and it squeezes everything together. And that's where we do our adjustments to make sure that this spins and feels just right. These guys, we don't tighten them down until this feels perfectly like we wanna have no play. We don't want it wobbling side to side. We want it to feel solid, but we also want it to be able to spin smoothly. So see how when I do that, it just kinda goes on its own and there's just no resistance. It's just kind of doing its thing. If I tighten this too much, let's see. It'll start to uh, not want, well, this kind of bonks things down. It starts to see how it's not moving as much. Like it'll move, but it, it doesn't like it. It doesn't move freely. It stops. So if we loosen it too much, now it's, well, maybe go a little bit more, I guess. Now there's wobbling here and we don't want that. Now moisture's getting in, we're putting extra wear on the bearings with all these weird forces and all that. So you wanna have it at the sweet point. 
However, we're not doing that part yet. So we gotta put grease in here first, but that's just how it works. We don't touch these until that's perfect. And then those guys are really to just kind of, to see how that's, oh. These aren't, so we get that squared away. Purpose of that. So let's do this. Let's back it up. Back it up, back it up. And loosen this right all the way. And we're going to pay attention to how we take it apart. All right. Pay perfect attention. Now we take that apart. And now we can grab some grease. I'm using Muck Off Bio Grease. I hate the way it smells, but it's biodegradable. And Muck Off stuff generally, I'd say most of the Muck Off stuff I've used, I've actually liked. So I don't have any real complaints or anything. And uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and unsnap this and deal with the hassle of that. So, you want to take some grease with my finger and, you know, tip it if you need to, move things how you need to to be able to see, but just putting some grease in there. There's no such thing as too much because if you put too much, when you tighten it, it'll just squeeze out and you just, you know, just kind of waste your grease, waste a little bit of money. Uh, if you put too little, I feel like that's more problematic because um, then your bearings might not be adequately greased. And so then you can just grab them and, uh, you know, just put grease all over these guys. I've seen people just like take the whole thing and just like dunk it in the, the grease, which I mean, that works too. Seems a little less civilized in my opinion. I don't know, whatever, it's the same. All right, and then any extra grease I have, I just kind of throw it down here, maybe put a little bit more uh, on this bottom part. So everything is nicely lubricated and greased. We don't have any bare metal running on bare metal. And I also like to put a good amount of grease because it's also going to act as like a water barrier or a moisture barrier. So I think we've got plenty in there. Boom. So now, actually, I got a bunch of it off there. Well, we can slide this back in how we had it. Get my fancy smancy dog collar up here. Hopefully that worked pretty good if I hadn't caught my thumb. There we go. And so now doing the same thing. Just gonna take this off and you can just leave it exactly how it was. Get the bearing out. And we're just gonna fill. Let's see. Try to make it so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Kind of see, mostly see. Yeah, something like that. All right, so yeah, I'm just gonna put a bunch of grease in here, just filling this little racetrack with grease. And this is more than is needed, realistically. But like I said, any extra is just gonna get pushed out. And it's going to make a nice barrier to any 
uh, water or whatever that tries to get in. And I just see those as nothing but good things. I want to make sure I get grease on the bearings themselves so that they are spinning freely. We don't want to get damaged. We don't want metal rubbing on metal. It's going to prevent corrosion. It's just grease does all these wonderful things. All right. God, this is a lot. <laughs> but it's fine. It's utterly fine. I'm just going to smear some on here as well. Well, the surfaces have some on there. Boom. Put all that back. Slide this little wedge in here. Now, try to clean my hands up a little bit. Just a little bit. And so the spacers are actually two different sizes. I don't think I pointed this out on the first round. Um, so the bigger one I typically put on the bottom. You can flip it around. This is really like a, a customization. You can make it to what fits you better. So putting the bigger spacer on the bottom is going to raise the handlebars up a little bit higher. Whereas putting the skinnier one is going to have them just a little bit lower. I mean, it's not a huge amount. You know, it's only... You know, you're looking at a difference of that, but that's the kind of the purpose of the spacers is you can get different heights if, um, like, especially on a new bike, where is this, um, you can cut this to different heights. This is already cut to the height that it's at, so it's, it's just, that's just it. Um, right, I'm going to put this guy back on here. Make sure we didn't go the one I go now. There we go. And we want to have a bit of a gap here. Oh, I can't really see that, can you? Let's see if I can pull that down somewhere. And like that. How's that? Yeah, it's hard to get good angles here. Let's see. I don't know. Can you see that? Not really. Well, you want to have a bit of a gap here. So that's why I put one of the spacers on top. Because you want to have, um, you don't want it to be flush. Because you need this to have some room to compress things down. Oh, no. I wanted to put a little bit of grease on the screw, too. There, just get some on the threads. Ooh. All right, I'll we'll just stick that in now. Start to tighten it up. There we go. Then get this guy and tighten some more. And you can see down, oh, maybe you can't see down here. You can see down here, this, um, it's closing up, closing the gap there. And so at this point, I can just remove that. It's not really helping us anymore. And so now, I'm gonna line this up so it's even. Spacers look nice. All right, and so now, basically you want to tighten this enough, like I said, so that there's no play, but it spins freely. And I find that basically, if you just kind of go until it, oh, you can't see my hand, can you? So if I'm using a tool like this, so it's, it's spinning freely right here, if I just go until it's like, like that's it, like it doesn't want to go anymore. That's usually right about where it needs to be. All right, no play, and it's spinning freely. So that's perfect. Ooh. 
And so now we can tighten these guys up. And now we adjust it so that it's pretty much straight. And I say pretty much because to me it's a lot easier to get this straight for steering purposes when it's on the ground. And so I just tighten until um, kind of get contact, I guess you could say. And then you want to go back and forth so that you're evenly tightening. And this should have a torque spec. Um, and so you want to check that and use a torque wrench to get it just right. And so now that is smooth. Look how smooth that is. And no play. Awesome. Just get a rag and clean up. See how any extra grease just kind of squirts out the excess that you don't need. Wipe that up. Wipe that up. And we are all set here. Bada boom, bada bing. All right. That's it. We've got a few more things. To, we got a few more things to do with this bike. Gonna put the shifters on. Gonna adjust that derailleur. Um, replace the cables and brakes. All that fun stuff. This video went longer than I wanted it to, but hopefully you learned something and it was interesting, or you just like my voice. You just like some. ASMR type of stuff going on. There you go. So, like and subscribe. Check out our website, our Facebook page. See what we're doing. Uh, trying to get all these bikes ready for summer. This particular bike we're going to use on our excursions. I'm going to be taking kids to, who normally wouldn't be able to, out to some mountain biking trails and just like, uh, just like dirt trails and gravel trails, things like that, to get them out in nature. And some of the other bikes are going to be donated to foster kids at a big event that we do every year. So like and subscribe and uh, thanks for all your support.